Welcome, and thank you for joining us today as we celebrate philanthropy with Hawkeyes Give Back, Children's Medicine Champion, featuring Jerry Stead. My name is Lucy Brennan, and I am president of the student organization, the Student Advancement Network. Throughout my time at Iowa, I have learned that philanthropy impacts my everyday experiences, both within and beyond the classroom. This has inspired me to make philanthropic action a priority in everything that I do, which led me to joining Student Advancement Network. University of Iowa students who join the Student Advancement Network serve as selected representatives of the student body to University of Iowa alumni, donors, and friends. We also educate our peers on the importance of philanthropy and engagement, their many different forms, and ways that they can give back as Hawkeyes. It is now my pleasure to welcome the University of Iowa's president, Dr. Barbara J. Wilson, to share remarks and introduce our featured speaker. Thank you, Lucy. And a special thanks to all the students who are here today to join us. We're really excited that you're here. Our university has a long tradition of excellence in education, in research, creativity, and of course, patient care. And that excellence is fueled by the generosity of generations of Hawkeyes. It's easy to recognize philanthropy at work in the buildings and the campus monuments around campus, but our alumni, our friends, and our donors make a difference in many ways by offering support for our faculty and their cutting edge research, by sharing their expertise in the classroom, by providing resources for innovative programming throughout campus, and by creating scholarships for students. As many of you know, this week we announced the Together Hawkeyes campaign. This historic campaign has the goal of reaching 300,000 alumni, establishing 3 million points of connection, and raising $3 billion for Iowa's boldest aspirations. Together, Hawkeyes lead the way, fuel discoveries, change lives, and dream big. And our speaker today, Jerry Stead, embodies all of these qualities. Jerry Stead is a visionary, a business leader who has enjoyed a long and illustrious career leading high-tech and information companies. The Maquoketa, Iowa native, has guided numerous major national and international organizations as CEO and chairman. And he served on 37 corporate boards during his career, 37. Jerry and his wife, Mary Joy, are dedicated to inspiring others through philanthropy, volunteering, and through leadership. They've chaired 16 capital campaign drives for nonprofit organizations, and they are founding donors of the community organizations Healthy Lifestars and Community 43. The Steads are also ardent supporters of the Lilly Family School of Philanthropy at Indiana University, Banner Health, the Salk Institute, and the, and the Garrett Evangelical Theological Seminary. And today, Jerry is Chair Emeritus at Clarivate, a global information services provider. And he's Chairman of the Banner Alzheimer's Institute and Garrett Evangelical. I don't know when he sleeps, actually. No matter where they've lived, the Steads have never forgotten about their home state or the University of Iowa. Most recently, they made a significant gift to create the Stead Family Scholars Program, which funds research grants to outstanding early career scholars in the Roy J. and Lucille A. Carver College of Medicine. Their visionary generosity and transformative gifts also helped build, of course, the UI Stead Ch Family Children's Hospital and elevated the Stead Family Department of Pediatrics, offering pediatric patients the highest level of care 
comfort, and compassion. In recent years, UI Stead Family Children's Hospital has gained national recognition thanks to the best tradition in college sports, the Hawkeye Wave. And while Jerry and Mary Joy didn't create the wave, it's hard to imagine its existence without their support. I have expected you all to stand up and start waving, but you were gripped by the video, I know. Through their philanthropic work, Jerry and Mary Joy have left an indelible mark on the University of Iowa, for which we are immensely grateful. Please join me in welcoming Jerry Stead. Thank you very much. It's really great to, to be here today. I'm going to start by telling you about my day yesterday with Mary Joy. Uh, many of you know we uh, started dating when we were 15. Uh, just, I married an older woman, by the way. She's 12 days older than me. And, and so uh, we, what happened, we got here late Tuesday night. We had an event to be at Makokata with yesterday, which we did. And on the way, we drove by where we had our first date, which was really exciting. It was Mary Joy and I and another couple sh uh, shepherded by my parents to a basketball game. So that was about 7.30 yesterday morning. Mary Joy and I saw that. We went to Makokata where we started dating and actually got married uh, in December of 1961. Uh, then we came back and we took a drive up to see what used to be Forest View Trailer Court, which is now gone. Uh, we lived in that trailer court after we got married, 40 foot by 10 foot trailer, happy as could be. We lived there three and a half years. Both of our sons were born here. And that's part of the reason, and I'll talk in a minute about giving back, why we so love the University of Iowa hospitals. And when we drove up there, we talked about all the fun we had. I lived uh, with, with the most priceless person that I ever met. Uh, we didn't know what we couldn't do. And I hope you all think forever about that same thing. Because we still don't know what we can't do, so we do it. Uh, we lived on $2,900 a year. 2900. Uh, it was so funny because uh, Mary Joy and I kept budgets, and we still have that budget book, and that was, we review it once a year as a reminder. A really big week of groceries was $26.02, and that was the world we grew up in. I worked 40 hours a week uh, doing drafting and, uh, for the county, and then did, uh, I ran survey crews in the summer. And uh, I had, at one point, I think 30 people working for me, uh, when I was 20, uh, how much do you think I got an hour? Dollar fifty. <laughs> I was better paid by 10 cents than anybody else there. And, and, and we were so blessed because the county uh, engineer who was here asked us if, asked me if I'd like to mow his lawn. I said, absolutely. So Mary Jo and I mowed the lawn every Saturday and that was worth $5. And do you know what $5 was worth with maid rights then? Uh, we, we would feast each night on a maid right from our, our lawn mowing. So that's the way we grew up. And what we said, uh, we were so blessed and still feel that way. Mary Joy 
uh, her family had, her great-grandfather was a missionary in India for 42 years. Her grandfather was born in India. When we grew up with the, the belief in giving, uh, I was blessed to have three pastors as uncles. Uh, one great uncle who was a missionary in China, uh, actually captured by the Japanese during Second World War, freed by the Chinese. And so we grew up that way. And one of the things we thought about, we used to talk about this a lot, we tithed, uh, for, well, almost tithed. We gave $250 of that $2,900 every year to the United Methodist Church uh, here. And by the way, uh, you're going to hear me talk more about this, what I ask all of you to do in a few moments. Think of time, talent, and treasure. So that was our treasure, $250 a year. Our time was we did uh, Sunday school teaching and junior MIF. And our talent was we took care of little kids that nobody else would take care of during church. <laughs> and we got pretty good at doing that. So what we did then, and I still remember we talked about it a lot, uh, Mary Joy said someday if we ever are fortunate enough, having had both children born here, we want to give something back for that. We want to make a difference at uh, the university. Well, two, two other quick things. Uh, when we, like I said, we dated all through high school, I actually had a scholarship at Dartmouth for, to play football uh, and baseball. Mary Joy had a scholarship at Northwestern uh, in music and, and grades. We, we turned them both down so we could come to Iowa together. And, and it was such a, it was, it was such an easy decision, wasn't it? She's looking at me. I always make sure she's nodding yes or no. <laughs> so if, if I have to stop something, that means she's nodding no, so don't worry about it. But, but it was so interesting. You know how long it took us to get in and accepted that day? We wrote, went to the registrar's office. It was down in the basement of one of the buildings on the main campus. And we gave them a check for $100 a piece, and we were in. <laughs> and... Every moment of it, we enjoyed it. So what we talked about as we were blessed, uh, you heard President Wilson talk. I've been so blessed over the years. Uh, I led 10 great companies. I've had the opportunity to lead over 400,000 people over my career. And some of the things that we were able to do, it became clear that we'd set priorities to be able to gift. In fact, Mary Joy said after we'd moved we moved 23 times, by the way. She reminds me of that quite often. Uh, uh, after the 19th, she said, we're going to find a place that we like, one that we can stay and have fun and enjoy. And that's why we ended up in Scottsdale. But in each of those moves, she would say, I think we can give more now. So we set priorities. We said we want to help create great leaders for the future. And that was in business, it was in religion, it was in research, and it was in education. And those were the four areas we said we'd focus on. As we move forward over the years and we're able to give more, there was, I can still remember the nightmare, Joy said, we're now going to give more than we make. And I said, okay, that, I got it. Uh, that meant that some of the blessings we'd had, we'd give to others. And, and I said, we will do that. We'll do that together. But then we set three other priorities. And I talked to you about these because it's a wonderful way. The joy of giving is the most wonderful thing any one of you do have or ever will have. Giving to others is much more important than anything else any of us could do. We set three other priorities. My mother had Alzheimer's uh, a, a long time ago. Uh, in, in the late, early 80s. Uh, it, first of all, most people didn't even know what it was. We had no help of what we had to do. So we said, we're going to find a prevention for that. We started the Banner Alzheimer's Association 18 years ago last week. I would tell you that today if uh, Dr. Ryman, who was the co-founder of Banner Alzheimer's was with me. We set three goals there. I always think three goals are right. You get more than that, you'll probably forget them. You get less than that, it's not as much as you could have done. So that we always work on three. And those three goals were we will find a prevention for Alzheimer's before one, one more group of people pass on. 
So we set a 20-year goal, and we said we would do it then. He would tell you if he was up here today that he's 90% sure that by the fourth quarter of 2025, first quarter of 2026, we will have an approved prevention drug for 70% of Alzheimer's patients. So that's, if you want to have... <laughs> But, but that's an example of think big, and you can make things happen. Think uh, out of the box, and you can make things happen. And when we set that, we also set two other goals. We said we were going to create an environment where every, every university, every, every college uh, that had hospitals would be able to provide great care for their patients and particularly the families that had Alzheimer's so we could help educate that. The second one we went after was child obesity. If you know the facts of, of the cost of health, about 50% of that in the world today is a result of child obesity. So we went after that. Uh, uh, Barbara mentioned uh, the Healthy Life Stars was the beginning of it, 20 years old now. Uh, we went through the Salvation Army, became very involved there. We've put over a million and a half young people through that obesity program all over the world, and we continue to work on that so that it can bend the curve. That's what we learned to do. How do you set priorities of great things you can do by bending the curve, making it better? Uh, and, and so we, we set that one. And, and then the, the third one was mental health. Uh, which also, if you, could, uh, if you could allocate the true health care costs, would be an enormous amount of money. And that one partly was because two of my 17 cousins had committed suicide, and we wanted to go after that one. So Mary Joyce served, and I was very active on an organization worldwide called Fountain House. It has 1,200 locations everywhere in the world to help the mentally ill. Uh, by the way, Mary Joy had the how many of you are from New York City? Mary Joy had the pleasure of being the only non-New York City member of that, that board. And when she'd get done, I'd say, how'd it go? And she said, I think, well. And then the, uh, the, the guy that was the CEO would call and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. We're thinking out of the New York box. So we did that. We started an organization we're very proud of today called Community 43. We've put 2,000 people through that in Phoenix. It's to help people that are recovering from mental illness to go through the process, be, have the opportunity to be held accountable, be responsible, and we retrained them uh, around the, the, the city. A good example today, 75% of all of the people that uh, have uh, wheelchair service at the airports is from Community 43. So those are just examples of what, what we can do. And I'll give you those because I would expect my question to you today, one of several I'm going to ask is, what can you do to make this great organization called the University of Iowa different? What can you do to make it better? What do you do? I've spent my life thinking, how do you take the good and make it better? I led companies over the years with some belief systems that apply every place. One, trust every person, 100% trust of every person. I've always operated that way. I would encourage all of you to do the same. When you do that, you know, I always say together we're the very best. Do that. Trust each other. In fact, what I'd like you each to do now is just turn to the person next to you and tell them you're going to do something for the University of Iowa and they'll trust you. So let's do that right now. So now that we've raised the three billion, because I assume you all committed that, we can go for four. No, but it's so fun to think about that. Trust each other, treat every person with equal dignity and respect. And what I've always said with the companies I've been blessed to lead or be on boards of, profit and nonprofit, 
is, is so simple. It's, it, if I had a dollar left, I'd spend it on training and development. And there's nothing more important that we can do in our world today than to think about making that happen. So it's been so much fun. I uh, retired, I've failed retirement significantly many <laughs> times. Uh, I actually stepped down uh, a week ago uh, last year, uh, actually four days ago, of 42 years of being uh, CEO and chairman of public companies. So I retired and uh, my hobby now is uh, supporting startups. I've started, I've helped start up 40 companies over the years uh, that have been just incredible successes by helping great people do great things. Every morning when I get up, that's the first thing I say. And you'll feel great if you do that yourself. Help great people do great things. How can I do that today? So I've always operated that way. And what we've now done, uh, and it, I tell you, it was so interesting. Dr. Robillard, the night I met him, everybody know Dr. Robillard, I hope? An amazing, wonderful person. The first time I met him was at Gary and Carol Fetke's house, and he had just taken the job. And uh, we were sitting there at dinner, and I said, what's a dream you'd like to have happen uh, as, as the head of the University of Iowa Hospitals? And he said, uh, he said, what I'd like to do is build a children's hospital like none ever built before. And in fact, it was funny. He said, uh, like, I'd like it to look over the football field. And Mary Jo and I thought, pretty interesting. Uh, uh, Gary Fetke did not comment. Uh, I, I, I think he was kind of wondering what, what had happened at that point. And, and I, I went on then with John uh, to say, let's take that dream and turn it into a vision. And let's turn that vision and it was so interesting because he said, let's not go too fast. Uh, I, I'm still on the dream. Let's turn that dream into a vision and turn that vision into reality. And that's what he did. And it's the most magnificent thing I've ever been part of. What we've now done uh, as my hobby is we've started a company uh, that is fostering startups. We're very focused on medical startups. Uh, one of them happened to be a company called Ferripulse that we sold to Boston Scientific that's literally changing the world uh, a couple years ago. The five we currently have are all focused on, on helping make the world a better place. And what we've done is put it under our umbrella of the Stead Family Foundation and then CIV, uh, which you'll see a little bit about like right now if we could play that video. <laughs> I'm John Robillard, and I dream of making the University of Iowa and UI Healthcare the best place in this country where everyone in Iowa is proud of and proud to be part of it. I'm Stal Saraf, and I want to impact the lives of people through science and help detect and treat people with Alzheimer's, ALS, and other neurogenic diseases. My name is Aaron Cohen Godul. I'm the president and the founder of the Neurosurgical Atlas, and my mission in life is truly transform the care of patients and the quality of life of patients after brain surgery. Hi, I'm Eric Ryman. My colleagues and I want to find effective Alzheimer's prevention therapies within the next three years. My name is Teddy Raskin, and I want to grow our commercial business so that we can fund benefit concerts all over the country to help transform the lives of our students, the survivors of interpersonal and sexual violence, and to inspire another generation of entrepreneurs. Jerry, through Jerry and Mary George, through their investment in the Children's Hospital, uh, have really affected the life of so many people that would bring dividend to all of us and to our society for generations to come. My dear niece, Rachel, died at age 12 from a very malignant and difficult brain tumor. These experiences have truly motivated me 
to know that other mothers and fathers and families don't go through that. Most everything that's being developed right now in neurodegenerative diseases like ALS and Alzheimer's is focusing on slowing the process of deterioration or kind of the bad stuff that happens. What Spinogenics is actually doing is we actually are trying to regrow those connections. Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of memory and thinking problems in older people and the most feared medical condition in older adults. It's a problem we need to address. I founded Lights in the Lawn in 2011, 2012. Lights in the Lawn is a benefit concert in Nashville. Um, it supports survivors of interpersonal violence, sexual and domestic abuse and violence. It's been truly the biggest honor of my life to be considered by Mary Joy and Jerry, to be one of those few people that have considered to be great, to be worthy of their cause and their support. Jerry's impact on my goals has been many. He's a supporter. He understands the needs and sees the vision, and that has been priceless for me. Thanks to Jerry and Mary Joy, we now have a realistic chance to find and support the availability of the first Alzheimer's prevention therapies within the next two to three years. Jerry Stead and his wife, Mary Joy, they have dedicated their lives to leveraging their brains, their resources, their access into transformative growth for other people. We have always had a, a pretty focused but highly ambitious goals. And Jerry has always asked us to think more ambitiously at how we could have the greatest possible impact. Jerry and Mary Jory, there is really no words to thank you enough for what you've done for the university, for UI Healthcare, and for all of us. I think your legacy will continue for years to come, and we are so fortunate to have you as our leader. So that's just a great example of wonderful people that we're trying to help be more successful than ever before. One of the things I've talked to all of them about and I use a lot is one of my favorite statements, live a life without limits for the only thing holding you back is your own. And I try to live that way. I try to expect it from everybody. I always think about, and the people that have worked with me over all the years know it, I stretch the rubber band to change as fast, far and as fast as I can. And you know how the only way you'll know if you went too far? You break the rubber band. And then you know we went one step too far, but we would have never known that if we wouldn't have stretched it that far. And that's what I think we can do together. That's what I think the University of Iowa, and I'm so proud of, is doing together. And my challenge to everybody is, many of you as students, uh, time and talent is just as important as can possibly be as treasure. And I would encourage each of you to, uh, like tonight, send a note, an email to the University of Iowa Children's Hospital uh, to the kids. Great way to get started of giving back. Great way to get started of feeling part of it. I'd also ask you to think through about what I said earlier that if we operate together, we are the very best. If we say, here's what we can do together as fellow University of Iowa members, and here's how we can be the very best. We're good, we can be great, and if we do it together, we will. Uh, one example only, uh, uh, Lynette will remember this well along with others. Our goal at the last campaign was 500 million for the, for the college, and we raised 832 million. So if you do that math, uh, that's, uh, our, if the goal is 3 billion, do the math, what's 60% more? <laughs> so if I were you all, I would make sure that Lynette and and, and Barb, make that gold happen. It's 4.6 million, <laughs> nothing to it. And we can do it, because together we will be the very best. 
together we'll be prouder of our organization than any organization that's ever ever existed and together we can take the enormous pride that I wake up with every day thinking I am so proud to be an Iowa Hawkeye. I am so proud to be able to be with wonderful people. I can t I've traveled all over the world. I can tell you in two minutes if it's an Iowa Hawkeye. <laughs> and it's just great. So I encourage you, uh, and you're going to hear a little more tomorrow at the football game about it, pick something. Go do it. It's going to make Iowa an ever greater place to be. I congratulate all of you. Uh, Mary Jo and I turned 80 this year. Actually, I need to correct that. She was on, we were on an airplane on the way to New Zealand when her birthday occurred. So we, when she was in the air, uh, she turned 80, but we, when we landed, we'd missed it. So she's still 79 now, so she's younger, <laughs> younger than me. And, and she's made it work. But when we turned 80, we said, it would be wonderful if we could go back and do it all over again. We wouldn't do anything different. We'd just have more fun doing it. Thank you all. Let's go, go, go. Thank you, thank you. I think we take some questions. My question to all of you is, is there any doubt of 4.6 billion? Jerry has asked us to prepare a QR code so that you can activate on what he requested to send a note of encouragement to patients um, at the Stead Family Children's Hospital if you want to use your talent and your time, and you can also donate your treasure. That's a great use of current technology and social media, huh? <laughs> Jerry, we think about, um, I know they're talking about a lot on campus about AI. And how do you see that impacting all of this work that you're trying to do? How do you see that uh, changing the speed and the transformation? It's a great question. If you didn't, if you all heard it, what's the impact of AI? It's interesting, two comments on that. Each of the startups, the five we're sponsoring, have a huge impact with AI right now. Uh, it, it's, it, it's in, I, when I was leading Square D, I had a company called U.S. Robotics. Uh, we, I sold it in 1988, and at that point, uh, the guy that was running it said, in 30 years, we're going to have artificial intelligence that you won't need robots. You'll be able to do things you've never thought about. And it, coincidentally, I was uh, uh, over at the, the, the college business this afternoon, and that's by far the most important thing that can go on. What we were talking about, example only, basic accounting is something that we're, we're not gonna teach. That's, it's not gonna be needed. It's how do we take it the next step. The thing I would, and, and I live with artificial intelligence today and have with everything we do, the thing I would encourage is three things. Make sure it's, it's the fastest changing impact that we can have in the world and it'll continue to be for at least the next five to eight years. Make sure that our education systems, make sure that where we work accepts that and uses it as tools, because it's a wonderful tool to help make an incredible difference. And I, I would encourage you all uh, to think through, you hear a lot about everything these days, right? Uh, on, on data and information, I'll give you an example only. I get up at 3 o'clock every morning and I do exercises. While I'm doing those, I watch three TV programs. I watch MSNBC, I watch ABC, and I watch CNN. And, and, I'm sorry, four, Fox. Why do I do that? None of them are telling us what's really going on. So you have to figure out your own artificial intelligence of what really is happening. 
So that's the way to think about it. And let's not be fooled. Uh, there are issues that, uh, that existed in our whole lives, our whole careers. If bad guys get a hold of good things, it, it'll be a problem. But let's not let that slow us down. Let's use that for all that it's worth. Uh, the one class we were in today uh, is using those as tools today. So it's so exciting. But I, I would love, if, if I could do it all over, I said I wouldn't change anything, I would. I'd be able to be here for another 25, 30 years with artificial intelligence because it's the biggest leapfrog we're going to have. Great question. Jerry, uh, right here. Way out here, you can't see. You it's have, the sun. Uh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, uh, sorry, you have inspired so many people over your life. Who inspired you? That, that's a great question. Uh, if you all heard who inspired me, Norman Vincent Peale. Uh, the power of positive thinking. Uh, and, and my two grandmothers, in that order. Uh, Norman Vincent Peale, famous guy I've served on in a, the guidepost board for many, many years. His, his optimism about life and his issue of telling all of us, help others and we'll feel great, was good. My two grandmothers were very, very, very active Methodists. Uh, and uh, they both taught me as I grew up, and Mary Joy was blessed in the same way, to be to be excited about helping others, to make sure my, well, Grandma Stead uh, was Teacher of the Year in Iowa when she was 80 years old, a long time ago. And she always, she was the one that gave me this that I carry everywhere with me. Uh, when I graduated from college, it said, uh, men and women that think a lot about themselves are a very small bundle. Men and women that think too much about themselves are a very small bundle. And I always thought about that because my life, our lives are so much enriched when we can enjoy it. And if you've never read Norman Vincent Peale, Power of Positive Thinking, do it. I read it every morning when I meditate because it's just a great way to think, how do we help great people do great things? And I'll make one other comment because I've been blessed with lots of great business executives over the years. And you know, the thing that always brought me back to Norman Vincent Peale was my job uh, was if I could create the greatest companies in the world, the greatest universities in the world, I could stay out of the way and we could help encourage others to be ever more successful. Great question, thank you. Gary, Andrew Nemanja, I'm a 2017 graduate. Thank you for the inspiring speech. You've undoubtedly accomplished a lot in your life, so congratulations. And I'm sure in that, right, you said you've stretched a lot of rubber bands to their maximum. And so I would imagine that you've gone through a lot of difficulties, right? You referenced your cousin's tragedies. And I'm curious if you have a mental model that you kind of enlist when you're going through those more difficult moments in life. Ask me an example, just so I'm sure we're together. If the one talk, you're talk about if you're running a big public company and the stock, market, the stock is crashing. Right, or you're going through a difficult relationship in your family, what do you turn to in Great. the most stressful moments in life? Great. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, and we do all of those every day, one way or the other, in today's world. I always focus on the future, and I work backwards from the goals of the future, so that when, when things are happening that aren't working, I always think, this is where we're going, this is how we're gonna get there, now I'll work backwards from there to get there, and I'm not going to let the short-term stuff get in my way. Uh, I, I used to, if, if you look up all the stuff that's on Google or wherever with me when I was public CEO, the analysts disliked me intensely uh, because I would never give them anything except annual forecast. They wanted quarterly. I never did it. Because when you do that, you are show, focusing too short-term. When we're going through a tough time, uh, the, the other thing, because th that's the way Mary Joy and I grew up, when we're going through a tough time, we pray together, and it's helped us a lot. But your, your question's so good. I think the world today uh, that we're living in is a, a trying world. 
uh, and yet I believe so much in all of you and all the other people, the good people in the world, that we'll get through that, but let's set the goal of what, what is success? Three billion is success, as an example. And how am I going to work through there? How am I going to get there? And that helps us get out of the day-to-day. And by the way, the comment you ask is a great one. I break probably one out of four rubber bands. Because I, w- I wouldn't have known if I wouldn't have gotten that far. But I, and I got used to, well, Mary Joy could tell you, well, I blew that one. Now let's go back and reset a goal and make it happen. Thank you. Great question. I have a question back here. Uh, as you said, uh, you helped a lot of startups, medical startups. Uh, what would be your best advice for undergrads like most of us in here who would like to make a medical startup or any startup to I help impact as many people as possible? How to have a, a help an undergrad who's interested in doing a medical startup. Oh, great. Call me and we'll do it together. <laughs> I'm serious. Because one of my greatest success stories, it was University of Iowa. A, a young technologist and a chemical engineering major uh, 12 years ago won the Rice Entrepreneurial Annual Event. And I happened to be setting, as Mary Joy knows, almost by accident with the young chemical engineer. And he told me that. I said, God, that's incredible. I couldn't believe that it happened. Nobody knew it. Uh, They had done it on their own. So we started that company. I hired a guy that had done three other, it was his third uh, company. Uh, We sold, that's the company I mentioned, we sold two years ago, Fairpulse, pre-revenue for $1.2 billion. So that happened here at the University of Iowa. And the research guy, uh, who would kill me if you knew who he was, because uh, he was a wonderful guy, brilliant. And he said, Jerry, this, these pieces of paper, shares, don't mean anything to me. I want you to buy them from me. And I said, I'm not going to buy them from you. I'll loan you the money, and you can pay me back. He now has $75 million more million than he did when we started. So anytime you're ready, let me know. One more, I guess, huh? We okay? Let's call it a day. I would just, again, congratulate everybody. I'm, I'm so proud to be part of this wonderful institution. I know you all are, too. And I'm so proud to know what we're going to do. And when we leave our legacies, every one of us in this room, it will be an ever greater, ever more successful University of Iowa. Thank you all very much. And now, incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us today, Jerry, and thank you to you all for joining us. As you leave, please remember to scan the QR code on the screens if you haven't done so already to answer Jerry's call to action. This concludes our event this afternoon. Thank you again for joining us on Iowa and Go Hawks.